Okay, today we're going to set up the uh, NetApp for real. We've been through a number of uh, presentations and learned all the theory behind the setup. We've done all our preparation and all our design work, and now we are going to do it for real. So I have uh, connected a console connection to my physical NetApp, um, and we can do a lot of the configuration through the uh, GUI interface, but predominantly we want to set up the, uh, the management IP um, and the system a controller IP address from the command prompt. So we're console connected in um, and we're going to set up. The first question is going to ask are we sure that we want to continue the setup. The setup information is stored in a number of text files within the NetApp file infrastructure and by issuing the setup command it's warning us that we're going to overwrite these configurations. So anything in square brackets means that that's the default so yes we are sure gives us a little bit of information about our device that we've currently got listing all the different types of uh, network connections okay the first thing it asks us to do is set a host so i'm going to call this sam1 okay do you want to enable ip6 we're not using ip6 for the moment so we take the default as no now, do we want to use interface groups? In this configuration, we're not going to use interface groups. Interface groups is if we weren't using 10 gigabit, and we wanted to combine the um, single Ethernet ports into an interface group and give it a virtual IP address. So for this, the answer is going to be no. Okay, like I said, we're only going to set up the management console ports for, for the moment. So all the interface ports, as we can see in this picture here, are for the iSCSI connections. So we're going to give these uh, blank IP addresses to start with. Okay, for each IP address we enter, it's going to ask us if we want to enter the partner's IP address. Now, what this means is in the event of a controller failing, as we saw in the uh, presentations, it becomes uh, active passive and the IP addresses of this controller will be aliased onto the other controller so that any equipment out on the network can still find its way to a controller by its known IP address. But as I said, we're not actually entering any IP addresses at the moment, so we're going to say no to the, all of these. Okay, we're going to continue along putting blank IP addresses in for the moment. Okay, this is the first one we're interested in. Now we will need to set the IP address of the management interface where we're going to control this from. So we're going to uh, use the IP address from our planning, which is already been entered in, um, 172.17.20.1. Okay, uh, and the standard submask. So now we do want to enter the partner's IP address in the event of a controller failure. So in this instance, the for looking at our uh, planning spreadsheet, the partner's IP address is going to be 117. Oh, sorry, 172.17.20.3. Uh, we're not going to use flow control on the management port. We don't need to set a default gateway. Now, the management host um, is the host that's going to give us uh, administrative access to the core files by using um, NFS. Uh, what we can do is, for the moment, we're going to allow uh, full access, but we will lock this down at a later stage. We're in the UK, so GMT, and the location I've entered is London. We're going to set the defaults here. We're not going to set up any other functionality at the moment. We'll do come back and do this later. Okay, this is going to allow us to set up the system processor. The system processor is similar to the light, lights out cards you'd find on a server, such as the uh, ILO on HP and iDRAC on the Dell. Um, it's important to have an IP address um, set up on here because uh, we can even reboot and restart the system um, and if we lose access to the management port we can still get access to the system through the service processor so yes we are going to set it up we're not going to use DHCP we're going to assign it an IP address and as you can see from our spreadsheet we're going to assign it uh, 172.17.3.121 uh, standard sub mask uh, we don't need a default gateway uh, we're not going to set up the mail host at the moment. We will need to do this when we're setting up auto support. Okay, so we set up our first host and it is ready to be rebooted. So we issue a reboot command. Well, 
we have now connected to the other SAN through the console cable. And we're going to now perform exactly the same setup on the other SAN. The uh, only difference here being that we're going to enter the primary IP address from the management console as dot three and the partner IP address as dot one. Uh, then we'll have our cluster set up and we can do some basic tests. So we're going to uh, just run through that process again. So this is going to be SAN two. So here we set the management IP address that we agreed in the spreadsheet. So 172.17.2.3. And the answer is yes. And now we enter all the uh, alternative IP address. So we know it's 172.17.20.1. Memon flow control, not interested in the default gateway. And leave these all at the default. Yes. And this is what we can set the service processor as. Okay, and now we need to issue the reboot. I'm James Sillett, and I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments or questions, you can contact me by any of the means shown below.